you have to ask yourself. Remember, we're talking about the problem of assets that are being financed by uh, by companies, uh, by uh, by debtors, by and large, or by um, by loans, and you owe people the um, the people that hold the notes for you. Um, you are a debtor to them. How how much money are you generating in order to be able to make sure your business stays solvent? You can pay your bills as well as you can pay off um, pay your creditors. How much liquidity do you have on a daily or monthly basis in order to pay off your your bills? Those are liquidity ratios. These are the looking at the amount of assets you have that are easily turned into cash and how much you then can use of those to pay off any debts that come that arise, to pay off your trade credit, which is pay your suppliers. You know, they drip, deliver things and they leave you a bill and then you have to pay your invoices, um, to pay your operating expenses and to pay short-term credit that you might have. How fast can you do that? Generally, if you have a high liquidity ratio, you means you have plenty of cash to satisfy all your creditor needs. Um, but it could also mean that you just have too much cash on hand and you're not really putting the cash to work or providing appropriate level of returns, you know, in terms of dividends to some of your shareholders. It may be that you're not operating all that efficiently. So you have to understand that. Um, so they're best looked at really in terms of, along with the other ratios and in particular your asset utilization ratios. So you can make sure that not only are you running the business efficiently and you have a good at inventory turnover and receivables turnover, but also that you have, um, you are, not, you don't have too many receivables because that would indicate that you have plenty of liquidity because you can always collect your money. So there's a, there's a trade off associated with that. With those ratios. So let's talk about a couple of those. Current ratio is how much of the assets you have that are current in the sense that you can turn them into cash relatively quickly. Um, the current assets on the balance sheet, which typically are the receivables and the inventories, um, are, are the main things to be thinking about. Your current assets and your cash, cash and securities that you might own, you know, bank accounts and the like. Um, current assets divided by your Current payments, current liabilities are things that are due in the short term in the, in the period that you're, you're reporting on. And you divide those. And if you have plenty of cash and receivables and inventories, and you divide that by the amount you owe your creditors and you owe your bankers or your, your, um, your trade suppliers and the like, that in this particular case is 3.8, 3.79 divided by 2.07. That gives you a 1.8 times. You have cash that's 100, that's 1.8 times the amount of money that you would owe. So you're running a pretty good shop. You're able to pay your bills pretty clearly. Even if you might have a, a period of time where your sales decline because of the weather or something like that, uh, you still have enough cash that's being generated for you to pay your bills. That's why your creditors would like that sort of thing. Inventory is a little harder to sell, to get rid of, to liquidate at full price than uh, receivables, for example, or cash or marketable securities. So the other ratio that people tend to look at for short-term crisis situations or short-term need for capital is called the quick ratio, which simply is the current assets without inventory, not including inventory, um, divided by your current liabilities. Because if you really are in a crisis and you have to sell off inventory, sometimes you have to take a loss and you have to have a real fire sale, if you will. And you want to try to avoid that. So how well, how solid are you financially not having to worry about selling your inventory? That's your quick ratio, and that's 1.36 in this particular example. Again, a very solid financial position to be in in terms of your liquidity. So these liquidity ratios are good at making sure that the liabilities on your account are cared for and that you don't run into a, a situation where your creditors, who are an important player, an important, important partner in giving you the capital that you need, where they're happy and they continue to offer you all these various kinds of credit. In addition, you want to see whether or not you have additional credit capacity in your business, which means that if you need to go and, and you want to expand to another location or buy some additional equipment, that you can, you can go out and acquire additional debt. That's your debt utilization ratio. It's kind of a bigger kind of story because it says um, how much more capital could I acquire through the banks, through liabilities, 
if I want to take a, a step forward or if some situation arises where I need to borrow some additional money. And that's your debt utilization ratios. They're the ones that measure how much additional capacity or how much capacity you've used, which implies how much additional capacity you might have. Uh, they measure the debt you have compared to the total other sources of capital you might have, like owner's equity, um, debt to equity ratio and whatever. How, how much of your company is financed from banks versus the owners? How much skin does the owner have in the game? Um, Debt financing is riskier than equity financing in, from the business perspective because debt people could generally come in and take possession of assets. Um, the um, stockholders can't. So from a stockholder perspective, their investment in you is riskier for them, but it's less risky for the business to get stock, get equity investors because they can't come in and repossess possess the, um, the equipment, if you will. So it's lower, it's lower risk for the business higher risk for the investor precisely because they can't come in and, uh, and try to get some value for their ownership in the business. Um, most companies tend to try and keep the level of, of uh, debt financing below 50% debt to total asset ratios um, just because that means you have some additional capacity to go raise some capital if you need to. Um, debt, to debt to total assets as you would expect, you take your total liabilities, you divide those by total assets, and in this particular case, you come up with a 40% ratio. That means that your business is 60% owned by the shareholders and 40% is encumbered by the debt holders or by your debtors, um, um, by the, um, the, people that, the, the people that hold the, uh, hold the paper that can get, come back and collect on their debt, on their loans to you if they need to do that. So that's, we, that's the uh, debt to total asset ratio. Um, you also have uh, debt to equity ratios that people measure sometimes. Um, and in terms of the payment, you also might want to have how much, how much earnings, how, how much your um, operating profit is as compared to the amount of interest you owe. So that determ that's determined by not only the amount of your debt to total assets ratio, but also the interest level, the interest rates that you have to sign up for in order to pay for your debt, to pay your, um, the amount of interest you have to pay in order to, um, to pay down your debts. So that's your times interest earned ratio. In that particular case, you take your EBIT and you divide that by your interest. Um, and that tells you in this particular case, uh, Starbucks example we've been talking about, um, they have $30 million, $33 million in, this is the total company, $33 million in interest that they owe, uh, and yet their EBIT is $1.7 billion in this particular case. So they have 50, almost 52 times the amount of earnings every month or every year than the interest that they have to pay. So there's plenty of opportunity there for them to pay their debts. Um, very strong balance sheet. Well, you, a good use of, of, that, of debt from this, in this particular case. Um, companies vary widely in terms of um, their effectiveness in making use of their, uh, their financial engineering, their financial structure. So that's the, um, the idea of uh, debt utilization and, um, and asset utilization how well you're structuring the, finance, the financing of your organization. Now, the 